We're going to talk about RB26 oiling. Uh, this is one of those things, there's a lot of information out there, some of it's good, some of it's bad, um, but a lot of people don't really show it in action. Um, step one, we're going to talk about simple stuff, crankshafts, short nose, short nose, long nose cranks, oil pumps, That's everybody has that information out there. Uh, then we're going to show some uh, examples of oil starvation on different cars. Uh, we start off with a completely stock car, then we move on to um, more horsepower, and then we move on to cars that have the oil starvation remedy. Um, all these cars are, are just doing straight line pulls in nice easy conditions here in South Florida where everything's nice and flat. Uh, so keep that in mind. These are the best conditions that the car is going to get. Uh, if you were to take any of these to a track or mountains and stuff, you, you, you would assume it's going to get worse. Um, this information is just something that I've kind of accumulated over years of doing this and logging and testing and just seeing what works and what doesn't work. And whenever we would have a failure, uh, always analyzing why that failure happened, uh, figure out what the root cause was, and then just do something to remedy for every, every single car moving forward. Uh, so enjoy. This is a lot of information. I, this is probably going to be a fairly long video, um, but you should learn something. Um, there's a chance I'm wrong here. There's a chance that everything I'm saying is BS. And um, if anyone would like to challenge this information with their own information, that's fine. Um, if you just want to call me an idiot for having an opinion, that's doesn't. I don't listen to that. But if you have your own proof uh, contradicting what I'm saying, I'd love to see it. First on the list is oil pumps. Um, I'm not going to talk about short nose and long nose, long nose cranks because that's really easy information. So we're just going to assume everyone has a long uh, nose crank here. Uh, but we will not use this guy. This is a factory N1 pump without updated gears. Uh, I'll put up a picture of what happens when you run stock gears and the destruction that it can cause. Um, so a lot of our builds run a brand new pump, but every single build will have upgraded gears to avoid destruction. Uh, some of our bigger horsepower builds and builds that use VCAM and just have more um, oiling needs, uh, we go into the we call it big boy pumps. This is going to be your uh, Nitto pump and your PRP billet pump, both awesome pumps, easy to adjust base pressure, absolutely fantastic. Anything more than this and we go into a dry sum setup. Uh, so here in the building block we actually have two uh, builds, We're both going to be in like the 600 horsepower range. Uh, so we are able to get away with just running an N1 pump with upgraded gears, uh, no VCAM, nothing crazy. Uh, and we'll get away with it and we're going to show later uh, in some videos uh, how well all this works. So this is one of our requirements. Every build that we do has to have a higher oil capacity than the factory. Um, the factory pan, even if you overfill it, only holds about five quarts. Uh, in this case, is a least spec pan. Uh, this holds about eight and a half, nine. Now, this is crucial in what we do. Uh, we have tried the oil drains. We have tried the uh, different baffles, different everything, and we, we always see uh, oil pressure issues when it comes to the oil pump being able to actually pick up oil from the sump. No matter what we've done, it's, it's helped, but the only thing that's fixed it has been this. And I'm actually going to share with you guys now some logs that, that show that in action. We're going to compare cars with factory pans versus cars with upgraded pans, whether the Leaf, the leaf Spec pan, uh, Rips Racing pan, or we've also had a couple with uh, some of the Gretti extensions, which are probably the most efficient, but they look, they're, they're, they sit below the subframe line of the car. So if you were to run, ever were to run something over, well, you know, you, you, you risk damaging the pan. Alrighty, so this is going to be our stock R33 GTR with virtually zero modifications. Um, this is going to be the oil pressure on the dyno. So linear pull, this is oil pressure here. Uh, RPM and this is just uh, the, the vehicle speed that it's picking up. Um, we're on a dyno. We're not moving. Um, there's nothing changing speed. So what happens is we are at bypass oil pressure the whole time. Essentially, this is the maximum pressure that the pump could make, dictated by the bypass spring. Uh, about 90 psi. This is about right. This is pretty much what every single RV is going to do, and uh, what every single RV is going to look like on the dyno. Whether you have a stock pan or, or an oversized pan, doesn't matter. Uh, this is what they, every single one of them looks like on five quarts of oil. So now this is the same exact car, uh, except we're on the road. Uh, we're doing a 
first gear to third gear pull, um, or easing into first gear. Um, if you launch, this gets a little worse. Uh, and let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is all pressure here. Uh, this is going to be first gear ramp up, second gear, third gear, and then you can see our road speed is constantly increasing. Um, so at first, uh, right before 5500 RPM, uh, we were making about right with all pressure. And then, you know, was it 85 PSI? And then all of a sudden, our oil pressure cuts in half. Um, this is the byproduct of there not being enough oil in the sump for the oil pump to pick up. That oil right now is hanging out in the head somewhere. And because the car is accelerating a lot faster than the oil is, that oil is hanging out behind the pan, behind the head, and it just simply can't make it down into the sump fast enough. Um, as we get into the other gears and, you know, uh, things start to level out, the oil starts to move the same speed of the car, there is plenty of oil in that sump, and we don't have the issue. But, you know, keep in mind, this is still pretty dangerously low oil pressure, even if it's just happening in first gear. Uh, so this is the same pull, except this time we just have the oil pan overfilled a little bit. Uh, this is what we recommend for anybody who with a stock pan. Um, and we still have that dip. Uh, instead of 40 PSI, we're seeing 50 PSI. So, yeah, it's just a good thing to do. It's, uh, I'd rather have 50 than 40. This is our R32 GTR making about 450. Uh, this is already pretty overfilled. Um, this is a one, two, three gear pull, and you can see the oil pressure uh, drops under every single pull. I'm sorry, under every single gear. Uh, reason for it is this car is a lot faster, therefore the oil has a harder time making it back to the sump. Um, engine is accelerating faster than the oil can make it down to the sump, and their byproduct is these large dips in oil pressure. Um, this gets worse as the horsepower increases and the car gets faster. Um, so let's show some examples of the next one's going to be a 600 horsepower setup. Okay, so this is going to be a twin turbo built uh, stock pan 600 horsepower R33 GTR. Uh, it's a it's is a it's not a PC log, uh, so I don't have the um, vehicle speed channel available, but I do have RPM and uh, oil pressure here. So what you're seeing is a shift from second to third gear. Uh, we take second gear to red line. We shift into third. Uh, we're already seeing big oil pressure divots there. And what you're seeing here is, you see how this RPM cuts off? Right here is the point where the ECU said, no thank you. Um, we are at 5,800 RPM. This is you know, making 22, 24 PSI boost. And we're only seeing 37 PSI of oil pressure. So we are shutting you down because if this gets any worse, we're going to damage this engine. Um, and then the rest of it, it's winding down as it goes into limp mode. This will be the last example of losing oil pressure. Um, this is a 700 horsepower R33 GTR single turbo. Uh, and this is really cool info. Um, so this is our boost down here. We have oil pressure and then we have our RPM. Um, so just to kind of prove my theory of, you know, the inertia thing. Um, so as we get into peak boost, that's when we start seeing our oil pressure come down. Other than that, oil pressure is following RPM pretty well. But as that car, you know, single turbo comes in pretty hard, as that single turbo kicks in and that car gets moving, now all of a sudden we start losing our oil pressure. Um, and in this case, we're down to uh, 30 PSI, uh, which is pretty horrible. And then you could see um, essentially what happened here is looks like engine protection. And as you can, you can see the oil pressure come back up as the, the car stops to accelerate. So now we have the identical car. Um, the only difference is this is an uh, this is a extended oil pan now. Um, and as you can see here, uh, this is our oil pressure, RPM, and boost. Big boost car. I mean, it's, I think it's, yeah, like almost 40 PSI. And oil pressure follows. Oil pressure has no issue keeping up. It goes hand in hand with RPM like it should. Um, this, is an, this is an oil pump that had no issues picking up oil from the sump. So this is actually the R33 GTR behind me um, in the video section where I'm in the shop. Uh, this is a fresh build, uh, made a little over 600 horsepower. Um, this is a N1 pump with upgraded gears. And here is a wide open throttle, one, through, one two, and three gear pull. Um, one, two, three, and as you can see, our oil pressure doesn't miss a beat. Uh, we're staying, for the most part, above 85 PSI the whole run, and our oil pressure uh, follows RPM pretty much identically as it should. 
This will be our final example. Um, this is going to be the upgrade pan um, that every other one has had with good oil pressure. Uh, except this one, this one has a billet PRP oil pump. Uh, base pressure is set to like 120, and as you can see, even though we have this ridiculously large oil pump, we're still able to maintain over 100 psi of oil pressure through this first second gear pull. Um, yeah. This engine, along with the rest that had the oil pan modification, simply will not have any oil starvation issues. Um, unless you, you know, were to do something silly like just not fill it up all the way or something. Now that we showed the examples of, well, oil pressure issues, uh, let's talk about what's going on. So we know the oil isn't in the sump because, well, it's not making pressure. And we know that when we add oil capacity, it does make pressure. Therefore, there's a void there. Um, what's happening is the oil is getting stuck in the back of the head, the back of the pan, or in some cases, um, over time, it's going to get stuck in your catch can. If you mount your catch can in the back, it's going to get full real quick. If you mount your catch can in the front, it's going to get full slower, right? Because now the oil is fighting, and the, the same the same force that's keeping the oil in the back of the block is now keeping it from going into the catch can. But that only works until this sucker fills up. So how do you remedy that? All our setups are a closed loop. In other words, as the catch can fills up, it drains back into the pan. And I know there's a lot of uh, opinions on doing that. I, we've tested this for years, my personal cars. Uh, we, we haven't had an issue. You just, there's plenty of information out there. As long as you let your car run and get warm, um, it will let your oil get warm, you will not have any issues with this. This just makes sure that all the oil in your engine is constantly being supplied to your sump and not, well, where it's not supposed to be. So here is an RB26 head and a 2J head side by side. Um, this is really cool kind of visual. Um, you see this big little hole right there? That is the drain for a 2J. You see that little guy right there? That is the drain for, for a, a, an RB head. So you can see the difference. Um, this being one of the main reasons why that oil likes to hang out in the head. So like we just discussed, um, the oil has a hard time returning down from the head, right? And even when it does make it down here, anything that's going to be on this section of the pan now has a hard time going forward, right? So the engine's accelerating, the oil wants to be back here, and now it has to make it through all this contraption to get down here. Um, there is a trick where you drill out the little drain holes that are there, and that does help, but it doesn't fix it. As you can see here, now that we have the pan extension, there is plenty more room for oil to hang out, and then once we put our baffle in there, um, you know, it, it, the, the oil can take its sweet time making it back down uh, because there's always going to be a supply here to feed the pump. So now let's talk about the final part, piece of the puzzle, which is the ability to actually monitor your oil pressure. Uh, in our case, we have an oil pressure sensor hooked up to our ECU, which is in this case a Haltech Elite, and we set up oil pressure protection. Um, and what, what that means is, if the ECU were to ever see the oil pressure uh, get below a threshold that we set, uh, we're going to go into limp mode, a code is set, it's logged, and it lets us look into what, what, what's going on. Uh, this can save you from an underfill condition, this could save you from an oil leak you don't know about, um, or this could save you from, you know, a, even though we, we do take the steps to upgrade the pumps, if you were to have an oil pump failure, this would catch it immediately. Potentially, maybe not saving the engine entirely, but, you know, uh, having a split second of oil pressure loss and maybe wiping out one bearing is a whole lot better than putting a hole in the block because, you know, the, the engine just made six, seven, eight hundred horsepower in the oil pressure. Okay, so now let's end the video. Uh, to be clear, I, I'm not doing this for any sort of YouTube video glory or anything like that. Um, we do this specifically for a reason. Um, and, uh, you know, people ask questions. They, our customers want to know, well, you know, why, why are you doing this and someone else is not? Well, this explains it. Um, I'm not scared of being challenged on this. Um, this is my opinion on the matter based on, well, lots of information from lots of people. And more importantly, my information that I have acquired over the years building and tuning these cars. Now, there are going to be people out there that have a different opinion on this. Um, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I don't necessarily want to hear the guys that's just like, trust me, bro, you're, you're wrong, you're an idiot, because that doesn't get us anywhere. Um, but if you out there have any contradicting evidence to show that what I'm saying is incorrect, or you'd like to add to it, um, you can always go on our website and reach out to me, welcome to comment on this, or post it in one of the Facebook groups, whatever. I'm just here providing information to my customers so they know what we are 
giving them as a product, and giving the community free information. Um, if you're building your car and you know this this helped you and, and deciding what to do and what not to do, then then awesome.